Glenn, yes. this is your first season as the nominal head man. Um, I know in the years of speaking with Jeff King, he always said you were the guy who ran the team, he was just the head man. Now you're the named head man. Does that put extra pressure on you or do you think your job remains the same, it's just a title change? Well, yeah, I mean, it is an added added pressure because at, at the end of the day, it was Jeff's team, regardless of, of what he said. It was Jeff was always the manager, and Jeff had the final say and everything. But it's it's you know a great opportunity for me now to you know I, I get the final say. It's it's my team. Um, the players that I've brought into the club are all my players, um, and it's it's a much changed squad from last season. And it's important I be my own man, um, and I want to go out this season and and play how I want to play. Um, with the style I want to want to do it in, and and hopefully we'll be successful with it. Me and uh, Jeff and myself had, you know, a number of years of success, and um, but he was always the manager. But now it's uh, you know he's handed over the reins to me, and it's and it's my turn. And it, as I say, and it's important that I be my own man. What's the dynamic? Uh, Jeff is director of football. He oversees what side of it? Is it the signings of players, the contract side, or is it more than that? I think at the moment, I mean, Jeff's Jeff's on the uh, the board. I think as uh, the director of football, and he's he's there for me really with with advice. I speak to him over you know a number of things, but but everything finances, uh, the players that we sign, and and the side is all down to me. Uh, but Jeff is there for me at the end of the phone, uh, you know, whenever I need him. And I, I do speak to him on, you know, numerous occasions um, about lots and lots of things. And uh, he's always there for that advice, which is great for me. Ben Chenry's joined the coaching staff. Uh, centre-half who played for you for many years, uh, mainly at Canby Island. And uh, he'll bring experience, certainly from the defensive point of view. Uh, has he had an impact already on the defenders? Yeah, I, I think so. I mean, I think he'd like me to make it clear that he's not defensive coach. He, I think he gets a little bit upset with that. I mean, he's he's my first team coach now, and he, he's done a great job. You know, he's, it's important you, you get people around you you can trust, and he, he's certainly that. And he's uh, enthusiastic and infectious in the changing room. He, uh, he he creates a great atmosphere amongst the players, and he certainly knows what's needed. You know, he's got a wealth of experience. He knows exactly how we work for being with us for a number of years. He knows how I, I conduct myself, and and he's slotted in nicely. And I'm I'm very pleased with the job he's doing for me. The championship is obviously the target, and uh, it's a perfectly realistic one given the way you you managed to get yourself back on track towards the end of the season and finished in the playoff positions it didn't work out in the playoffs of course but uh, you've got the, the players do you believe that are good enough to win the title and win it comfortably well I, I, I certainly wouldn't say that because I'm adding adding pressure to them um, you know I'd, and I, I wouldn't want to do that it's a new side we're looking to gel together they're they're a young team as well I've brought the average age of the the squad down quite drastically to be honest and uh, that them, them sort of players at that age are all striving for consistency and I think people have got to be patient with them um, you know they're going to be games where they're, they're not performing as well as they, they could do but I know one thing's for, for absolute certain that every player that is in this squad will give 100% for Chelmsford City Football Club their desire and the fire in their belly is fantastic and their application from day one has been spot on and that will carry them through games um, as for the league, I think it's going to be a tough league. I think it's going to be much tougher than last year. Lots, lots, and lots of clubs are going to be uh, involved in in the shake-up. I'm sure um, the sides that have come in from from the uh, Ryman Premier, uh, Dover and Staines will be strong. As will the teams coming down from the conference. And I think teams this year will have will have players amongst their own squad that, because of the current climate in football, that they wouldn't have necessarily had last year. Uh, so there's not quite the same amount of money, but this is probably the same throughout all of football, just about the recession, the credit crunch has taken a huge toll and uh, lots of clubs are having problems. Off the field, the club's finances are in a reasonably good situation, aren't they? Yeah, it's very, very good. I mean, the recession has got nothing to really to do with our reduced budget. We've done it because the budget we had before wasn't sustainable. So um, irrespective of the recession, we've reduced the budget because we want the club to go along on a sustainable level that we can take forward into the league and build on that. So um, our, our finances are good um, because we don't owe the ground. We, you know, the council own that. We just pay a rent here. Um, we own the clubhouse and the footprint around it. But, uh, yes, it's not bad at all. I mean, like every club, there's a lot of friendly loans from directors and things like this, but no, no problems at all. There's no point in a football club playing with money they don't have because when the money stops, the money they don't have stops, then the scenario is always dreadful. And uh, you spent 10 years playing away from your home base. 
during which time, of course, lots of fans just drifted away because they weren't in the city. Now that you're back in the city, fans are coming back, and that's got to help everything. Yes, when we were away in the wilderness, we were playing before four to five hundred fans. We're now up to averaging 1250. We, we have had... Uh, well, nearly 4,000 here um, when we played Wimbledon, so we know that the fans are out there. Uh, it's just a case of enticing them back. We're doing all we can. Um, the Playface, uh, our new sponsors, with their uh, interactive website, will allow all the fans to interact directly with the club, and we're hoping this will uh, create more interest as well. I was just going to mention, I've spoken with Playface already this morning. They are... Uh a very large organisation and of course the Melbourne Park, the stadium is going to be one of those that's been designated as a training centre for 2012 so lots of sports are going to be happening around and uh, the club is of course very close to the East London base where the Olympics are going to be. Are you hoping that this is going to have some sort of offshoot and help the club? Well definitely because the infrastructure within the stadium has got to obviously be enhanced for these facilities. Um, we're already in talks with the council about some improvements on the ground um, over on the far side, the athletic side, which will be uh, community based and it will you know, have a beneficial effect for both football and the athletics. So uh, we, we're all hoping that on the back of that there will be funds available to make this a much better place. Uh, you mentioned the athletic stadium. This is an athletic stadium ground and there are lots of people that uh, find it very hard to watch football on there. You've done your bit uh, as a football club to have fans standing on temporary stands behind both goals. This has led to a much better atmosphere than there's a lot of places and with now getting 1,200 to 1,500 on a regular basis. The fans are very important to the success of the club, aren't they? Well, they certainly are. Without the fans, you, you haven't got a club. And, of course, our fans actually own the club. It's actually owned by the supporters of Chelsea City Football Club, 140 um, bondholders um, who uh, all came together when the club was in danger of going, uh, going into liquidation. So the club is actually owned by the fans. And uh, we want more and more fans to come here and be a part of Chelsea City. And we're talking about uh, the championship is the aim. Glenn Pennyfather is now the manager of the team and uh, Jeff King has become director of football. There's a lot more pressure on Glenn this year to deliver, isn't there? I think there is, but Glenn has really, really taken the ball by the horns. He, he's so proactive, he's so energetic, so keen. Um, and, you know, to see the transformation in Glenn has been fantastic. He really, really is looking forward to the season. And the championship is going to be the end of the result, isn't it? Well, that's what we're all hoping for. You know, this, uh, this will be the icing on the cake. Um, but we've got a very young squad. We're not building for just the one season. We're building for the next two or three seasons. I mean, if we get into the championship, then we've got a, a team that we know can, can hold their own in that and can only get better with the uh, average age of them. Thank you very much. Thank you.